This is the chapter describing the creation by Brahma, creation of uh, different categories of living beings. So first it was described in the beginning of this chapter how Brahma created the Kumaras and Brahma wanted the Kumaras to uh, increase the population, themselves generate progeny. But the Kumaras, they refused because they were very advanced spiritually and they wanted to uh, remain Naishtika Brahmachari. Brahma could understand why they refused and he did not say anything about the refusal. But he was unable to control his anger and therefore from between his eyebrows uh, Shiva was born, Rudra. And Shiva immediately, he asked Brahma, uh, designate my place and what is my duty? So Brahma designated 11 places and also uh, instructed him to accept different wives also. Now you may accept all the names and places designated for you and your different wives. And since you are now one of the masters of the living entities, uh, he is described as Prajanam uh, Asiyat Patihi. He is one of the Prajapatis, Shiva. So you may increase the population on a large scale. Praja Bhakvihi. You may increase the population on a large scale. So what did uh, Rudra do? He began to generate progeny. But the progeny he generated were resembling him in his furious nature, angry nature. So when Brahma saw that these uh, fiery natured progeny of Shiva or Rudra, they have begun to devastate everything on all sides. And for devastation, how are they doing it? There is fire coming out of their eyes. And they are even trying to attack Brahma. Because they only know one thing. What are they supposed to do? Destroy. So then Brahma uh, told Rudra, there is no need for you to generate living entities of this nature. Uh, a different kind of population is required at the phase of creation and maintenance. Different kind of population is required. Also, Brahma said that uh, this type of praja offspring will be required at a time of dissolution of the universe when everything has to be destroyed. That time it is required. So till then, what is Shiva supposed to do? Better situate yourself in penance 
and by penance you will be able to actually uh, create the universe as it was before and Brahma also tells uh, penance is the only way to even approach the personality of Godhead tapasya austerity tapasya penance is the only way to approach the personality of Godhead and the personality of Godhead is within the heart of every living entity sarva bhuta guhavasam but he is at the same time adhokshaja he is beyond the reach of all senses he is very close but you cannot uh, perceive him by your senses senses include the mind Hmm? You cannot perceive him by any of your senses, including the mind. So the only way to approach him even is tapasya, penance. <clears throat> so therefore, Prabhupada says, since uh, Rudra was advised to perform penance, we see many pictures Rudra sitting always in meditation. Have you seen the picture? Like this, always sitting. Or he is holding Rudraksha beads and chanting on the beads. He doesn't chant on Tulsi beads. He chants on Rudraksha beads. That is uh, specifically for Shiva, Rudraksha beads. And uh, he is sitting in meditation for the attainment of the favor of the Lord. See, even Shiva is doing meditation for what? For getting the favor of the Supreme Lord. So Shiva is not God. Shiva is not God. Huh? Shiva is subordinate to the Supreme Lord. He is one of the uh, personalities in charge of the material affairs. Creation, maintenance, destruction. Three departments of this world. Material world. So, destruction is Shiva's department. Department of destruction. Now, Shiva has got another uh, function also during the period of maintenance. During the period of creation, what did he do? He created the offspring also called Rudras. They are also called Rudras because they are also the fiery nature. But their services will be required not immediately. Only at the when the destruction has to happen. Hmm? Till then, Shiva is advised to do penance hmm? and during the phase of maintenance Shiva takes charge of the mode of ignorance he is the director of the mode of ignorance and he uh, actually uh, participates as one of the devatas subordinate to the supreme lord exactly as per the direction of the supreme lord he uh, does the work of maintenance uh, he is uh, in charge of tamoguna uh, then uh, it is described here that uh, tapasya is necessary for approaching the personality of Godhead. Now tapasya itself uh, is described elaborately in the Bhagavad Gita in connection with approaching Krishna. Hmm? 
approaching the Supreme Lord. In the uh, different places, many different places, Tapasya is described. Uh, it is said here that uh, Tapasya can be performed in three different modes. In the 17th chapter it is described uh, that uh, tapasya can be performed in three modes. Aharastu api sarvasya trividho bhavati priyaha yajnas tapas tathadanam tesham bhedam imam shunu. The food which one partakes is of three kinds according to the three gunas. The same is true of sacrifices, austerities, and charity. So, this chapter called Divisions of Faith, Krishna describes there are three kinds of faith born of the different modes in which people are situated. Accordingly, being situated in one of the modes, people also have three different kinds of food they partake. They perform three kinds of sacrifices, they perform three kinds of austerities, they perform three kinds of charity. According to the situation, faith, food, Sacrifice, austerity, charity. Five different items are described in this chapter according to the gunas. So particularly tapasya, if you see, <clears throat> shraddhaya with faith, one who executes tapasya paraya taptam one who executes uh, the austerities with faith in order to uh, please the Supreme, parayataptam. And apala khang chibihi, without any desire for any result, Satvikam parichakshate. Such people are said to be performing tapasya in the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, tapasya is done to please the Supreme without any expectation of any result. Without any expectation of result. Then uh, there are penances which people perform. Satkara mana pujartham. Uh, they perform tapasya for uh, uh, to gain respect, for honor, and for reverence. Satkara mana pujartham. Uh, and the uh, such penance performed for gaining respect. It is neither stable nor permanent. It is uh, chalam adruvam. Chalam means flickering, adruvam means temporary. It is not permanent, it is not stable. And there are others who are foolish, mudha. How do they perform tapasya? Pidaya kriyate tapaha. They perform uh, Austerity, which is of the nature of self-torture. They torture their body or they sometimes perform tapasya to destroy or injure others. And such tapasya is said to be in the mode of ignorance. <clears throat> tapasya means voluntarily accepting some inconvenience for the body and mind. But if there is inconvenience for the body and mind, 
does it mean it's okay to torture the body or the mind no that's why it has to be regulated according to shastra tapasya has to be regulated according to shastra in line with scriptures if somebody performs tapasya then that is not torturing the body for example in the bhagavatam there are two uh, contrasting uh, examples dhruva maharaj did tapasya it is described in the fourth canto seventh canto describes hiranyakashipu performing tapasya now the interesting thing is both were performing severe austerity both their austerities were very severe hmm? so dhruva maharaj he was performing severe austerities because he wanted to meet the supreme personality of godhead as it is said here only by penance or austerity you can even approach the supreme lord he was going to the forest on the direction of his mother to search for vishnu and he met narad muni so he is narada where is the supreme lord because his mother said somewhere in the forest i have heard supreme lord is there available so narada muni said you want to approach the supreme lord but you are a small boy this is not the age for doing all this going to the forest and searching for the supreme lord go back home so he said i cannot go back home because he was very much insulted at home by his stepmother so he was very much uh, feeling insult as a kshatriya so narad muni saw that this boy is very adamant so he took compassion upon the boy and said okay i will instruct you how you can search for the supreme lord so he instructed him in doing meditation ashtanga yoga meditation the type of meditation so that involves uh, very severe austerities but mind you none of these austerities result in torturing the body or the mind see the description for the first month dhruva maharaj ate only fruits and berries on every third day only to keep his body and soul together what is the thing keep his body to maintain the body it is not to destroy the body it is not for torturing the body it is for maintaining the body he is taking he is taking very little but is that very little minimum required to maintain the body minimum required to maintain the body huh? so this is very important to note he took some fruits and berries every third day in the second month he ate only every six days and for his eatables he took some dry grass and leaves now why is he reducing this is for gaining control over the senses and the mind in order to direct the attention the consciousness towards inside withdrawing the complete uh, attention from outside because right now our attention is always outside because we are looking for sense objects according to the senses demanding sense demand is there eyes are demanding beautiful form ears are demanding very nice pleasing words or nice music something that is pleasing for us for the ears tongue is demanding something very tasty very palatable hmm? taste so like that demands are there therefore our attention is outside 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 meditation is 
to focus our attention on the supreme lord in the heart so you have to withdraw your attention from outside what do we try to do somebody may try to simultaneously focus inside and also keep the attention generally outside divide the attention is it not that's not what we try to do first when we are chanting attentively hear no we are told what will we do or oh, attentively hear okay i'll also hear hare krishna hare krishna 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 but our mind will also be our attention will also be outside but such hearing is not going to work for the sake of realizing the supreme if you want to realize the supreme lord either inside the heart as the lord seated in the heart or as the holy name in the form of the sound in either case you have to have undivided attention in either meditation on the supreme in the heart or attentively hearing the sound of hari krishna undivided attention therefore what is required you have to withdraw the attention from all external sense objects all external sense objects so the way to withdraw this attention from sense objects in ashtanga yoga is a systematic process eight fold process eight steps are there yama niyama there are rules and regulations don't do this do this don't do this do this don't do this do this so many rules are there in ashtanga yoga hmm? so dhruva maharaj is following those rules as directed by narad muni so he's going on reducing the eating and that by what is happening the tongue is getting controlled the tongue is getting controlled and what does bhagavatam say if you can completely control the tongue all the other senses are automatically controlled that is why the stress is given here that he was first eating very little and then he cut down that eating you see cutting down the eating why control the tongue why control the tongue specifically of course all the senses are to be controlled but by control of the tongue automatically all the senses can be controlled this is a secret for devotees how do we control the tongue devotees method is not ashtanga yoga we don't say first you take very little then gradually cut down eating and make it zero no that's not what is told in bhakti yoga what is the method of bhakti yoga for controlling the tongue so that we can control all the senses eat only prasadam eat only prasadam and also tongue is used for vibrating so for what vibration what should we vibrate in ashtanga yoga what is the vibration don't vibrate the tongue at all mauna completely becomes silent anukalpa anukalpa means take something just to maintain this body just to maintain the body without injuring the bodily organs acidity means it will injure the stomach the digestive uh, organ it will injure so don't injure the digestive organ this is the recommendation of the shastra never so therefore the then why nirjal is told because by doing nirjal fasting generally people who have accumulated fat in their body that fat can be burned 
So there are two advantages of fasting, nirjal fasting on Ekadashi. What is that? One is the fat in the body can be burnt. And secondly, the eating can be controlled. The eating can be controlled. That is all the time eating, 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 eating. It's not good. Eating all the time is not good. So at least once in 15 days, fasting is compulsory. Fasting is compulsory, at least once in 15 days. And I was inquiring with one Ayurvedic doctor, uh, why is it that everybody is not able to do nirjal fasting without injuring their body, without getting into acidity problem at all? He said, because not everybody has got stored fat in their body. He said, for example, me, he told, you don't have stored fat in your body. So you should not do nirjal in this present condition. You should not do nirjal. Therefore, you take something. So Shastras have already got that recommendation. Shastras already have it. Prabhupada also told, because some of you cannot do nirjal fasting. Therefore, we say, take some anukalpa prasadam. Take some fruits, some milk, some sabudana, something, non-grain, something. Hmm? So, grains are considered heavy. Grains are considered heavy. Huh? So, grains are required for nourishing the body. But don't take grains on Ekadashi. Don't take grains on Ekadashi. Non-grain. But non-grain also, not that you eat non-grain, full stomach. Nicely enjoy eating. No. That's not an Ekadashi day. Ekadashi day, that's not the way to eat. Ekadashi day, each one should take, if at all you need to take, so that you can continue doing your service. You don't feel very weak. Sometimes devotees, they do fasting. I'm feeling so tired. I can't even stand. I can't even chant. One devotee came to I can't even chant Hare Krishna loudly. So no, that sort of fasting should not be done. That sort of fasting should not be done. So, it's very clear, fasting is for controlling the tongue. Fasting should be done, even by devotees. But that fasting is as per recommendation of Shastra. Not to torture the bodily organs. Not to injure the bodily organs. Charirastham karshayantaha. That should not be done. So, <clears throat> Uh, tapasya is required for approaching the Supreme Lord, for realizing the Supreme Lord, but the tapasya has to be regulated. It cannot be done whimsically. It cannot be done according to one's concoction. No. And it should be done, Shastrik regulation means it has to be done on recommended days. Recommended days you should do tapasya. A fasting. Okay? I'll stop here. Rantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jayashla Prabhupada ki jayashla.